What a blessing to be with you this evening. I spent all week in Washington, D.C., so it's great to be back in America. <laughs> you know, the Word tells us where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Well, let me tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is with us tonight. On Sunday mornings, Dr. Harris stands at this pulpit and he'll analyze scriptures. He'll go back to the original Greek. If you look to the etymology of the word politics, it has two parts. Poly, meaning many, and ticks, meaning blood-sucking parasites. <laughs> And that's actually a fairly accurate description of politics today. We are here tonight standing on the word. We are here tonight claiming the promise of scripture. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear their prayer from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Amen. That is the promise that the men and women here tonight and the men and women in churches and homes throughout this country are standing on is today our land needs healing. Tonight is a celebration, and tonight is a call to action. It's a celebration of our shared heritage. When this country was founded, it was founded on the radical concept that our rights don't come from kings or queens or government, but our rights come from Almighty God. As the Declaration of Independence put it, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed not by a king, not by a queen, not even by a president, that they are endowed by their creator Amen. with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today we're celebrating 200 years ago as the bombs were flying, as the smoke was in the air, Francis Scott Key giving thanksgiving to God Almighty that our flag was still there. Later tonight, Pastor Scarborough is going to talk to you about the fourth stanza of the Star Spangled Banner, a stanza that is a prayer to Almighty God, to a nation founded on the proposition, in God we trust. Tonight we're celebrating that, that which brings us together. But tonight is also a call to action. The very first liberty protected in the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights to our Constitution is religious liberty. And today religious liberty is threatened. It is threatened at home and it is threatened abroad. And all of us are called to stand and defend the liberty of every American to seek out the Lord God Almighty with all of our hearts, minds, and soul, free of the government getting in the way. We've seen in recent years the IRS asking citizen groups, tell us what books you're reading. Tell us the content of your prayers. You know what? The federal government has no business asking any American the content of our prayers. Although I, for one, wish the answer had been, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We have seen the men and women of our military being told, if you share your faith with others, you risk discipline. We saw an Air Force chaplain in Alaska 
who publicly posted a blog posting saying there are no atheists in foxholes, ordered by his commanding officer to take that down. How far have we come? Now, we saw just this year a tremendous victory for religious liberty in the Hobby Lobby case. The Supreme Court rightly ruled that the federal government cannot force a Christian company like Hobby Lobby to pay for abortion-inducing drug, drugs against their religious teachings. And yet that decision was 5-4. One vote different. And the answer from our government becomes the federal government can try to force you to violate your religious faith. Indeed, right now, another case that is currently ongoing concerns the Little Sisters of the Poor. The Little Sisters of the Poor is a Catholic convent of nuns who've taken vows of poverty. They spend their lives giving health care to the poor, to the elderly. Right now, the federal government is litigating against the Little Sisters of the Poor, trying to impose millions of dollars of fines in order to force the Little Sisters of the Poor to pay for abortion-inducing drugs of others. Now, now, let me give you a very basic rule of thumb. If you're litigating against nuns, <laughs> you've probably done something wrong. And then the threats from abroad. We see in Iraq and Syria, ISIS. ISIS is the face of evil. They are crucifying Christians. They are beheading children. We see in Nigeria, Boko Haram kidnapping Nigerian Christian girls just for their faith to sell them into slavery. We see in the nation of Iran, Pastor Saeed Abedini, an American pastor serving eight years in prison simply for professing his Christian faith. And we see in Sudan the incredible story of Miriam Ibrahim. Miriam is a young wife, a young mother, with a son, Martin, 20 months old, and a little baby girl, Maya. Maya was born in a Sudanese prison cell with her mother's legs and leg irons. Miriam was sentenced by the government of Sudan to receive 100 lashes and then to hang by the neck until dead. Her crime was being a Christian. And yet believers all across America, all across the world, lifted Miriam up and spoke out and the government of Sudan could not stand against the pressure. The government of Sudan told Miriam we will spare you this sentence if only you will renounce Christ. And Miriam said, I cannot and I will not renounce Christ. The world cried out against her unjust oppression and the government of Sudan released her and she is home in America, free, free at last. Fifty-seven years ago, my father, Pastor Rafael Cruz, fled Cuba penniless, having been imprisoned and tortured. He came here seeking freedom. Today, he travels the country speaking to pastors, urging pastors. The word commands us to be salt and light in the world. And you cannot be salt and light if you are hidden away, if you are away from the world. We have an obligation, every one of us, to stand up and speak the truth that together we might bring back and restore 
this last great best hope of mankind that is the United States of America. Thank you and God bless you.